Hi everyone and welcome to another game review by Thinkathema. I'm Amy, this is my fiance Maggie. Together we review games from two different perspectives. I'm all about the mechanics and Maggie loves the story or the theme integration. Mm. And today I in particular am really excited to review the game that was my number one game published in 2021. And that game is Dominant Species Marine. Dominant Species Marine was designed by the late Chad Jensen and was published by GMT Games. Uh, we should say that we've actually never played the original Dominant Species. Mm but you know, have looked over the rules of that and do understand how this one differs and it does differ uh, quite a little bit. So let's get straight into the review. All right, so in Dominant Species, we are 60, about 60 million years uh, in the past at a very kind of key point in the uh, history of evolution and we're all different marine, marine, marine species. And what we're trying to do is we wanna make sure that our species not only survives but thrives as much as possible to make sure that we make it past the very pivotal, very uh, life-changing asteroid that is uh, heading our way. So in order to do that, just like any species, we're going to be trying to like make sure that we um, have enough uh, food and that we're able to kind of adapt to different terrains, take over different terrains. We might have to do a little bit of competition for, uh, for our turf. We might have to obviously make sure that we reproduce our species so that we've got uh, a lot of presence in different areas and uh, yeah that's essentially the what we're going to be trying to do ultimately whoever has managed to do that the best will be the dominant species by the time the asteroid hits Earth. yes that's our our ultimate timer now before you get started in dominant species marine you will be selecting a player board that is one of four different animal species and depending on which one you select it will dictate where you belong in the food chain just like in real life the pecking order the pecking order <laughs> which will dictate the way that we break ties in the game and also the turn order so those who are lower in the food chain will be going first in turn order now the game takes place on this huge board. The board itself is really big and sits on the center of the table. And what you'll see in the middle of this board is a tile laying game, which represents planet Earth. And these hexagonal tiles will be added to planet Earth to build out the different types of terrain. This part of the game is area control. You are trying to replicate your animal species as much as possible because each of these tiles represents a little area control game where the person who has the most dominance in that area is going to get the most points at the end of the game and throughout the game when those tiles are scored. Now, the way that you're going to select the action that you want to play out on planet Earth is dictated by the right hand side of the board, which is all worker placement and a fairly interesting worker placement game at that because you will be placing out your pawns into this area to select the action that you want to take. But the trick to it is that you can only place your workers from top to bottom. So if I go here, the next action I need to take needs to be lower than that on the action selection or worker placement part of the board or to the right of that pawn on the same action. However, there are also some special pawns that you can recruit throughout the game that allow you to break some of the rules of placement in this area, but you will be vying for control over those pawns in what's called dominance in this game. Now, Interestingly, in this worker placement spot, you will be able to pull back all of your workers at a time that suits you. So once you've used all the workers you can, or if you want to race down in the actions and can no longer place anything because it needs to be lower than your previously placed workers, you're going to have to take a whole turn to bring back your workers before you can get moving again. And the way that this game cycles through is that every time everybody retrieves their workers, it triggers what is known as a reseed event. And then all of these um, options on the worker placement spots are going to change, but not everybody will get their workers back at the same time. The final and really important part of this board is the placement of these evolution cards. So these serve a couple of different purposes. You'll see that there are five 
cards placed out on the board and where they are positioned actually matters. So it goes from five to one and there is a worker placement spot that allows you to activate those cards. So if you were the one to activate those cards, you play out the action which can radically change things on the game in the center of the board and then that card is discarded. However, there is another thing that these cards bring into the game, and that is the presence or absence of these little icons in the corner of the card. One uh, is an extinction event, and the other is a survival event. Either of those events occur irrespective of people taking those cards. It's kind of like a built-in event system in the game that as soon as a new card is revealed with that icon on, it affects everybody. The extinction event means that anybody who has one of these little species cubes out on a tile where it can't be fed is actually going to be removed from the board. When a survival event is triggered, there's going to be bonus points allocated to the player who has the most presence on these special vent tiles. So that is going to be occurring continuously throughout the game. Now, one thing I've just mentioned there is food. Um, in this game, the food is referred to as elements. And those are the little tokens that you can see that are placed in the corner of these hexagonal tiles. What's interesting about these food elements is that in order to be able for your species to survive on these tiles, you need to have the presence of one of the types of foods that you can consume in the corner of the tile. So for example, this worm tile, this purple tile, feeds any species on these three adjacent tiles uh, with worms. And dictating what you can eat is your player board. So your player board has some built-in food that shows what you can eat. But along the course of the game, you're also able to adapt your animal species and bring in new foods that you can consume. So food is a limiting factor in terms of how far you can spread yourself out without considering where the food that you can eat is placed on the game board. So to recap, there are a few things that make your uh, the animal species that you're playing as asymmetric in this game. Firstly, the food that you can consume that's printed onto your player board. Then your position in the food chain, uh, which dictates how ties are broken in the area control component of this game. Your turn order, those lower in the food chain are going to go first in the worker placement spot at the beginning of the game. And finally, at the start of the game, you get to choose one of three cards called trait cards that is going to be placed on your board and for the most part remain there for the rest of the game. These trait cards give you a one-off game-breaking ability that for the most part really feels overpowered and is super interesting in the way that it changes the way that you interact with the game and also the way that opponents have to think about how they're going to strategize to also dominate against your animal species. So I guess I've already made it pretty well known in this video that this is a game that I absolutely adore and I loved it from the first time that I played it. Um, I, I love thinking about this game. Mm -hmm. I, it makes me smile when I read about this game. And I want to, I guess, step through some of the elements that I really liked and other areas where we thought it could be improved. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, my bias is clear. Mm -hmm. I really, really, <laughs> really Why love this game. Why do you like it so much? Like, <laughs> what is it about it that you enjoy so much? Well, um, uh, we love worker placement. We do. We that really was totally love our, our, our main mechanic into gaming. That yeah, yeah it really was appealed one to of us. those main mechanics that got us mm. into the hobby. Um, this worker placement is pretty special, I think, because there are a couple of different elements going on here. One is that you really need to plan out the way that you're going to flow down yeah. these action placement spots. So because you have to go below or mm. to the right of your previously placed workers, that creates a lot of tension around jumping ahead yeah. to try and do something or block a spot that you know someone else might take. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that these worker placement spots are constantly changing throughout the mm. game in two different ways. Um, firstly, at the beginning of each or when there's a reseed event, so mm. once everybody retrieves their workers, these little tokens get replaced on here. And the tokens on each of these worker placement spots really represent the, the things that you can take on as food that you can consume, or you might be placing new food out mm. onto the board, or you might be scoring particular types of tiles. 
those things are constantly changing and being drawn out of two draw bags mm. um, for the next round of the game. So it does feel like the, the things that you can get done, even though they are fixed actions per se, mm. the way that they play out on the board is constantly changing. Yeah, I agree. I, I really like that. Uh, that element of the that that fluidity of of the elements that are yeah that are there and that you can play around with thematically i still don't quite understand what my role is because how do i have so much control as a reptile or even you know as a crustacean over how the elements work you know it's like so it's like i am putting elements over it's like i'm i'm like a crustacean god like I'm a, like you know what i mean so it's like i get it from like a, if it was look i i enjoy the game i should say that i'm not actually like bagging it in any way it's just like an amusing uh reflection as a theme or going i don't quite understand realistically who yeah i, I feel like i'm like a bit higher than my animal species yeah. like i'm trying to manipulate the world in order to help my yeah. animal species survive <laughs> but yeah. yes i don't think any one of those uh um, element like animals would have been this able to machinate, you know, mm-hmm. the, the structure of all of these things. But uh, yeah, I agree with you that the um, the action selection, the worker placement, and action selection is really it's interesting in that that it's forcing you to kind of go in order. Mm. I did find, however, that because what happens as soon as you you finish and you you're uh, taking your workers back. There's this little marker here that then just gets moved to the right to signal that you've 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 gone through one of your full rounds, and that it's not until everyone is uh, as Amy said it's not until everyone has kind of done that and then the final person that kind of finishes officially finishes that round triggers that refresh of that of the of all the different elements because you're kind of waiting for the the last person to do it i actually didn't mind like i actually didn't mind going like i can jump ahead and then keep going and going and going cuz even when that reseed uh, event happens it's not really like it's not devastating there's no it's yeah. not like there's a major interim scoring or anything no, like that no but i think that is something that is so special about this because I'll, I'll give you an example of how this plays out for example if i'd gone here and here and Maggie had gone here and here. And in a two-player game, this this spot can only be taken by one person. And a regular pawn cannot bump a regular pawn. So in this case, mm. I can't take this spot. However, if Maggie was to retrieve her workers at a different time Mm-mm. to me, yeah. this will unlock this, which means that I actually, maybe I don't need to retrieve my yeah. workers um, when I thought I was going to have to. Mm. And so... The game becomes an interesting, the worker placement part of this game becomes a really interesting um, strategy of how can I elongate my turn? And Mm. it's not really to, um, you know, to kind of delay the reseed event, but in some instances it may help to delay the reseed event because I'm blocking spaces that I know you want to take. Mm. And so the longer I can hold my position yeah. on that worker placement spot, the less you can get done. Mm-hmm. And that to me is just like, That's I love that. I hadn't even thought of that, <laughs> but I, I also haven't felt the need. Like I actually haven't felt like, oh, I really want to go there. And it's, it just so happens to be blocked, which to me signals that the ways that we've been approaching the game strategy wise is quite different, which again, that's one of the things that I love about a game where it gives you multiple avenues to success you're not Mm -hmm. just uh you know you're not on one uh rail or carriage and this Mm -hmm. is the only way that you can play the game is the only way that you can finish it so so there's the other thing that we haven't mentioned is the timer for the game the game ends once we've gone through all of these evolution cards and in the final uh, set of cards somewhere in there is going to be that asteroid that's going to be Mm -hmm. shuffled in there and that's what's going to then signal the end uh, of the game when someone actually ends up collecting that or, or activating that. Mm-hmm. So you can also not only manipulate the the worker placement um, spots, but you can also manipulate the length of the game. So you can actually, and that was one of the things that uh, in one of the games that we had, I was trying to speed that up because I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I've got quite a good... Um, I've got a stronghold of the area again, control game. Thematically, you're not going to be able to speed up an asteroid. <laughs> if, like, it's like, if I, you know, if I score more, if I get more dominance, you know, that asteroid is going it, to... That's a, you know... It's a, but it is there's, a, some, there's some creative liberty, there artistic are, liberty. Certainly are, yeah. but yes. it, mechanically, that is super special, I mm. think, because yes, I, I was keeping an eye on that as well. It's like, how soon do you... Yeah. When the last few cards are coming out and it's getting more and more likely, that mm. that asteroid is going to come out 
And then once the asteroid actually becomes part of this evolution cards market, yeah. um, it's not until someone actually takes it. So then you still have a bit of control over, well, I'll just leave it for there. Mm-hmm. I'll just leave it there now because it's yeah. going to trigger Endgame. And I really need to fix up some things that are going on on the board. Yeah. Um, I really love that part of it as well. Yeah. There are a couple of other things. I'm sorry, I'm going to be talking so much in this video because <laughs> there are excited. other things. I'm super <laughs> excited. I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> In this area control portion of the board, the these elements, mm. the food that your species can feed on is super clever mm. because what it does is it stops an area control game where someone is just kind of racing through to cover mm. as much of the board as possible yeah. because the quicker you race through, you're more likely to start to spread out and put your species in areas where there is no food or there's no particular food that you can consume. Yeah. And when one of those extinction events um, gets triggered, all of those are going to be removed off the board if you can't use that food, which means that you're constantly weighing up what is the risk or return hmm. of of spreading out too quickly on the board. So yeah. I absolutely loved that about the game. I thought that was exceptionally clever mm. and means that because you can actually manipulate which foods are available, yep. you can kind of put people in these risky positions mm-hmm. um, and like then you start to turn over those cards to hope to you know to trigger an mm-hmm. extinction event which drives them off the board. Yeah. Another thing that I really loved is, which again, I don't really know how much sense this makes thematically. It's the 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 domination uh, act uh, the action, mm-hmm. which is one of the um, yeah one of your worker placement spots. This is domination, which means that you have the majority of of your species uh, in and it's sort of multiplied like the different tiles that are feeding. Sp- to a specific element so using one specific element at it as its food source and if you can kind of demonstrate that you have dominance over it then that's how you get one of these special pawns this becomes its own uh fun little mini war between mm-hmm. uh, between players because these pawns are so powerful mm-hmm. to have because they can bump they can kind of they can break all of the requirements of the, you know they can jump around they don't have to follow the top to bottom left to right yeah. they also there are also spots that are only available for these for these pawns and as you're doing that when you're when you're kind of gauging what the level of dominance uh, is that's that's racing that pawn's uh element on the victory point track by that level of dominance. And those are actually going to be victory points for you if you control that at the end of the game. Yes. So it all kind of adds to... And it's, and it's exceptionally clever mm. because you are constantly working out, because it is a function of how many of that food you have on your player board versus how much control you have of or uh, where you exist on the board in relation to that element. Mm. You can manipulate that uh, that dominance check in mm. multiple different ways. And so you can either spread out more on the board or you can try and adapt your animal species to be yeah. more dominant and require more, like have that food yeah. um, available on your player board. And, and that just is so much fun. Uh, so every time we've played this game, just that like stealing that special pawn from mm-hmm. each other is just, it's so clever. And it means that sometimes you might steal that pawn and then have an extra turn that you didn't anticipate that yeah. you had, which means you don't need to retrieve your workers. Yeah. And then at the end of the game, it does make a big difference to the, the victory points that you get, like you said. Mm. And so it's a part of the game that can't be ignored and yeah. it's really fun. Now the potential elephant, may not be the elephant, in the room how mean is this if it's a game about dominance and ultimately that competition and being the last species standing or the one with the best standing in the end uh, yeah let's let's talk about how confrontational it actually feels on the board extremely <laughs> well see i would say interestingly because like there's a lot of uh moves where you go ah, all my you know a lot of my my poor little species cubes have been eliminated and you have a finite pool of these cubes and if they manage to get eliminated they're they're gone completely they don't go, come back into your gene pool and so you're over time which again i don't know how much like why do you have a finite gene pool mm-hmm. it this raises more thematic questions <laughs> for me that um there are there's a lot of interesting thematic elements or thematic nods but um yeah so with this as you're as you're kind of spreading out and you're kind of yeah you're competing often 
there is some meanness. There is some, of I'm course. gonna, I'm gonna strategically take the piece of food that you need. And then if there's a, you know, if there's an event that gets triggered, you, you all your people may, you know, oh, all and, but, may there are, all, but there are mm. evolution cards that are even more direct than yes. that. Yeah, so yeah. there are some evolution cards that are like for every tile where you share space with another animal species, remove um, one of the species yeah. from that tile. And so you can just go cherry pick yeah. and eliminate all of these different yeah, all of these different species from the tiles um, and then therefore take control of those areas in terms mm. of points that will be scored. So yes, like any area control game, there is that direct interaction that is yes. occurring. And if you watch the channel, you will know that I love direct interaction with other players. I find the worker placement extremely tight mm -hmm. in that <clears throat> depending on what's drawn out of the bag, there are some really powerful and attractive options. Mm -hmm. And so everyone is looking at them being like how long can I mm -hmm. wait to get down the board and take that spot before someone's going to jump yeah. ahead and grab it so I really love the built-in tension in the game in that mm. um, in that regard I think that when you go into a game like this you like it, because it is area control, it's like if you play a classic like El Grande, you know that there's going to be a lot of flux in the, yes. the state of the board. So yeah. you have to be prepared that, yes, people are going to be taking out your species and then putting theirs in your place. And that is just um, part and parcel of a game like this. But you have to be comfortable with that level of interaction, mm. just like any game like this. Yeah. Another element that I enjoy is the Wonderlust action, which is how you end up uh, expanding the the tiles or, or essentially almost like uncovering or discovering what type of terrain each one of those areas was. So that's an interesting uh, point accumulation in and of itself because you get points for adjacencies. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you were to put this land tile in amongst all these other land tiles, you're going to be triggering some points um, as well for that. Uh, then you also, I, what I enjoy about the Wanderlust is not only are you discovering the type of terrain, it allows you to migrate there. So if you've got, if you've got, um, species that are adjacent and it's not just you if there's other species adjacent from your opponents they might be like, like hey, what's that that's interesting correlate reef yeah. i want to get in on that how's that reptile going let me go check it out i'll mm -hmm. sort that out and there's obviously usually there's going to be you know food that's going to be placed uh, near it and so yeah I, I i really enjoy that that actually felt you know fairly thematic mm. as well and all the cards actually the <clears throat> the description of what they do and their name all of it makes sort of thematic sense mm -hmm. as well. And I think the food chain element is really interesting because sometimes <laughs> it feels so unfair that, so annoying. Yeah. <laughs> that a different animal species is higher up on the food chain. And um, actually, so in this example, if we were to score this tile, because mm. we both have three, it would default to me as the person, as a reptile who is higher in the food chain yeah. to get the six points. And Maggie would have to take the three points. Yeah. And that can be infuriating if you're lower in the food chain. But this game is super balanced. I, I feel like I've been at the bottom of the food chain, at the top of the food chain, and been able to find a strategy um, that can work within the realms of what you can get done in this game. Mm. Also, these trait cards, they have some really tough things or abilities mm. that they give different players that allow them to excel in one particular area or hold you back. Yeah. And that can be excruciating as well, but I just love that puzzle. And the worker placement element, what I love about that as well is that because you're never quite sure when someone's going to retrieve their workers, um, it can open up um, worker placement spots that you didn't think were going to be available. And so you're constantly readjusting mm. your strategy. Yeah. And I just, I really think that this game is just such, there's such clever integration of all of the mechanics. Thematically, I enjoy the theme. Mm -hmm. I, I actually enjoy thinking about being a crustacean at like the beginning of times and, and how am I going to dominate? And does it any of this matter because we're about to get hit by, by an asteroid? Um, yeah. But the uh, one thing that I would have liked to see is that some of these words, because they're so thematic, so abundance, order troughs, um, regression, speciation, mm. evolution, it's hard to sometimes remember what action they refer to. 
What's great about this game is they are all written on the player board in yeah. front of you, which means you don't have to give away what you're looking at because yeah. you're looking at the board reading it. You can be reading it on your player board. It's a very helpful resource. Yes. Um, but I wish they'd put in brackets a shortcut summary to what mm. it means mechanically. Yeah. So with abundance, it would be like, you know, gaining you food or yeah. whatever the case may be. Yeah. Or, um, you know, competition, remove players' species yeah, yeah. from the board. So that would have been ha helpful but I find that I enjoy the thematic titles yeah. and once you get familiar with them, it does get easier, but it is a little bit of, barrier, of a barrier Initially, at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say this game, for, for a game that's quite uh, crunchy, like there's so much going on in this, it's so easy to set up. The setup is very, yes. very quick. It actually doesn't have that many components. And the, once you learn, once you know what you're doing, it's not a difficult game. The interesting thing about the complexity in here is just the decisions that you're trying to make and how you're going to combine your strategy together and make it come to life. So I really appreciate it. It feels very elegant mm -hmm. from that from that point of view. Yeah, and a quick um, mention of play account. Mm -hmm. This game does play really well at two. I yeah. know a lot of people prefer this game at two. Um, it does feel like the, the turns are much swifter. The game doesn't last as long. But I don't feel like this game is particularly long anyway and have heard that it is quite a sig is significantly shorter um, than the original Dominant right. Species yeah. because of the way I think the worker placement works um, slightly mm. differently across the two games. Yeah. Um, but for me, I preferred, preferred it at three players. I think mm. that is a really nice balance between the AP that can occur a little bit but also the way that that brings the worker placement spot part of this game to life and the area control, honestly, because you can get first, second and third placement points for a lot of these tiles. It is an int much more interesting um, puzzle mm. when there's more players. Yeah. So. so I actually preferred it at two, but I'm going to also uh, caveat that with saying that even though this is this is your favorite game of 2021, I enjoy it. I enjoy playing it, but it's not my style of game. So, and I think part of it is like, I love the sense of exploring and discovery. And I felt like I enjoyed probably when I do the wonder last I and just like, Oh, you know, but if, and even then it's like, you know, you can see which are the ones that are available. So it's not like that. There's no element of, of surprise there. The combat and like, not the combat, but like that competition and it all just mm -hmm. being about that area control is not really something that usually excites me. No, maybe you. it's much more of a multiplayer solitaire player yeah, yeah. Uh, with, you know, less interaction. This, yeah. this requires you to be very in tune with what everybody else yeah, is doing. You have to be, because it's all about how you're reacting mm -hmm. to what everyone else is, mm -hmm. is sort of doing. Or the potential upcoming risks. Yeah. Or whether you can take one of these special pawns from someone. Yeah. Uh, Ah, oh, yeah. So I it's like it's everything game. that yeah that it's you everything love. I love in a game yeah. here on the table. Mm. Uh, obviously, we haven't played all games in 2021, but I think this will be hard to top for me. This is a game that will rocket up my top games of all mm. time. I really, really love it. Um, so that is our review of Dominant Species Marine. If you enjoyed this review, please hit the like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll be back with more board game content soon. But otherwise, bye for now. Bye.